Oh man, I think that looked good. Huh? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, that's gonna look right. Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for tuning in again. Today we're going to be doing these incubator pods. Sci-fi incubators for your sci-fi terrain, scattered terrain. Now I made these for the one page dungeon you can find in Bexton Bazaar, issue 3. With an awesome cover page by Wylock. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for Bexton Bazaar, awesome crafting and just overall DM gaming magazine. One last huge shout out to At Kage Tai. Did an awesome job doing the artwork here and a little synopsis of what you could find in Bexham's Bazaar magazine. And that's it, guys. So, one page dungeon in Bexham's Bazaar, and these are the incubator pods that are going to go with that dungeon. Let's go. All right. Empty brown. We're going to clean this up, wash it up, make it happen. All right, we're back at it. Okay, fill it up. <laughs> Someone didn't get the memo. All right, fill it up with water. Go ahead, shake that up. All right, there we have. Got it. All cleaned out. And then we're going to go and step to the table with some goo going here now. So, yeah, I got to cut in with some voiceover because of recording issues and family things and whatever. So... I used the goo off to get the stickers off. I prepared two. I did one for the video. Now, I used it. I think you could use oil if you do attempt this. You can use oil instead of goo gone if you don't have it to get off the adhesive, but don't hold me to it. And just a quick picture of getting it nice and clean, get it prepped for the next step. And now back to some live video. All right. We're going to use this here hand sanitizer, I think, because it got the bubbles. So before I use the sanitizer... Wifey upgraded me. And yeah, like I said, it's the aloe. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna attach this to that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the background music. But we'll go ahead and glue this. You could use. You all right? Done with the bears? All right, let's cut. Let's do pictures. All right, guys. So we're going to do voiceovers to the outro. Now, I went ahead and super glued this because I needed it quick. But I guess you could do tacky glue or whatever. Anyway, I did my best to center it. I eyeballed it, and I was way off. I guess one of my eyeballs strayed. But you know I had to light that thing, man. That looks pretty good. I, I mean, I don't... I don't brag a lot, but um, I like how that came out. Anyway, I did a quick jig. Uh, I seen the paper clip for the jig from uh, DM Gyms at Tabletop Engineers. So, again, quick plug, quick shout out for the Beeson's Bazaar magazine. Now, I made mine a little smaller. I went ahead and just taped it up to the thing, and then I went ahead and just cut that circle. So... Maybe I'll uh, speed this up here. Now I had to do a top and a bottom. So, rinse and repeat, make it neat. Time for that glue. Make it do what it do. Alright, so what I did before I measured the radius was I measured the mouth of the bottle. And then I took half of that and then I measured that against the radius. So I got the diameter and then took half of it to the radius. If that makes sense, sometimes I explain things and they're not really coherent. But I approximated the center basically. Lined it up. And then just drew all the way around. From there, I just cut it down the center and then drew, uh, cut out those semicircles there. So I scored the middle and then I kind of just cut it out. It wasn't perfect, 
I still had to do some knife work to it, but so it didn't completely touch. But the nice thing about XPS foam is that it's kind of malleable. Malleable is the word. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But it bends. So you can kind of imprint it, dent it in, and do stuff with it. All right. I took that piece. Now I went ahead and went start for the jam. Now, again, they still didn't completely touch, but I was done carving it. At this point, I'm going to use the properties of XPS foam and make it contour to the bottle itself and just kind of jam it in. Force it, hold it, and let that hot glue set in, you know? Let that hot cool, the hot cool. <laughs> Haku, no, we're not writing Hakus. <laughs> Is that Dragon Ball Z or something? I don't. I've never watched Dragon Ball Z. Yo, don't put, don't, don't hold it against me, y'all. There's some things I just didn't watch. Um, I'm on a tangent, ain't I? Uh, shoot, where was I? Oh, hot glue. Let the hot glue cool because it's hot headed. That's what I meant to say. But I guess the joke is done, so. Man, it was in my head until Haku came out. All right. Anyway, I'm letting this settle in. So I'm holding it. The hot glue is kind of cooling down. It's settling in because of the tension. The tension is not going to allow it to do it on itself. So I got to hold it down. And you can see, I'm going to point it out. I got some hot glue on me and I suffered through it. I suffered through the pain just so I could get this right. So it sets in. And I say, you know what? You hit me with a 1d6 damage. That's it. I'll get a long rest tonight. All right. And then after that, I went ahead and cleaned it up. There's a nice little window. You guys know. I mean, ladies, gentlemen, if you're watching this, most likely you work with the hot glue. So you know that there's that little window where you can easily scrape it off, pull it off. It hasn't cooled down yet, but it's cool enough. Anyway, that's the window I took. I needed to make it flush because I had plans to cover up those seams with chipboard. So I wanted it, the chipboard to sit nice and flush. And then I couldn't help myself. I had to turn it on, y'all. I, I had to. I had to. Ooh, wee. All right, guys. So, again, me and Scraps, if it's laying on the side, I'm always thinking about how can I just use this right now? You know? These are my elephant tusks. I use all the parts. At least try to. So I said, you know what? I think I could use this cap. Dry fitted it to the top of the tea light, and I said, yeah, this is going to work. The objective of it was to cover up the look of the tea light. I knew I wanted something, and lo and behold, this was it. So I cleaned it up, and that's what it looked like. All right, so then I took some car stock here, and I knew this was going to cover up the seam. So this was going to cover up the neck of the bottle, and the bottom of the bottle where you can see that hot glue and that seam, you know, you can tell that it's a a hot glued bottle to XPS, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. So I measured it. I forget the dimensions now, and I think I used three quarters of the way. Anyway, I sliced it up, and then I super glued it because I didn't want the hot glue to melt the plastic. That was the main objective. So I'm going to skip to the super glue if I have footage. Anyway, let's just move forward. So after I put that on, I went ahead and masked the bottle itself to prep it for painting. And then I scraped off some of the excess hot glue. I was real careful not to dig into the plastic. And this is everything masked off. And these are all the pieces laid out that I'm going to use. And I knew for this project, at this point, I said, there's no way I'm going to paint inside those little crevices. So I had to pre-paint them. This is one instance where... I knew I had to do it or I'm in trouble later. All right. And then I laid out the pieces. Now, this is it complete, but this is just to show the paints that I used and you use it too, you know, or not, whatever. And that was it. Everything black bombed. I mixed the gunmetal with a blue 
and I got this metallic blue that I really liked. And then I just started gluing everything on. Uh, and that was it. The hot glue. That was the closer, the finisher. Finished it off with the hot glue. And I really didn't know the design. I mean, I had a basic concept in my head, but I didn't really know how it was going to turn out. But I just went ahead for it. And I'm sure, you know, you guys are more artistic than me, really. So you guys are going to come up with something flyer if you even attempt this. But the main thing to take away from this is the inside. That sanitizer or that sunburn relief gel with the bubbles in it and the tea light. Man, just do that. And you're going to be like, man, this is pretty neat. So, okay, guys, don't make fun of me too hard, all right? I forgot to take off the masking, so uh, that was a pain. And got to do it. So I made it happen, Captain. And that was it. I think I did some little embellishments here. I had these little pieces left over because I have a couple of reject prototypes. So uh, I had this little curved piece. I said, you know what? Let me make use of it again. These were laying around and no correction. Those were in my bag of scraps. So always keep a bag of scraps. If you're going to build sci-fi pieces, just have a nice bag of scraps ready at hand because you dump it out, you're going to find some inspiration in there. Believe it. And then I closed it out. So real top speed here. I think I'm at like a super boots. And went ahead and just topped it off like the good cherry. So that was it. Trimmed it up. And I said, you know what? I'm kind of happy with this. Touched it up in spots where my fingers. And then one last time, baby. Come on, let's light it. All right, guys. So, this is it. Oh, come here for a close look. You know, and you know, for the more artistic people out there, maybe you could give me some tips on how to make this more fancy. Some highlighting tips, some color tips. You know that color theory stuff. If, if uh, you guys know. Drop it in the comments below. That's it, guys. Did a little quick paint session, and now I'm going to go cool out with my son. Catch you guys. I'm a specimen of the Bronx.